Bi Emmanuel quickly is about to get a bag. Quickly was a late first round pick in his draft, but as we know, you can find gems anywhere in the draft. I believe he's eligible for a rookie max extension either this summer or next summer, but regardless, he's getting a bag. And it's really funny because at the beginning of the year, there were trade rumors, I believe, uh, potentially moving quickly, which I thought was insane. I was like, how is quickly even on the potential trading block? Like, he's untouchable to me, at least for now. Like, he's untouchable because you see the way he's playing even before this season. Like, he played well last year, too. He's a great rebounding guard. Now, obviously, you have Mr. Robinson, who can get like 12, 14, 16 rebounds. Randall's a great rebounder, so obviously he's not going to get as many as he could. But he's had games where he's had 10 rebounds, like he had triple-double last year. So, I mean, he can get rebounds. It's just, obviously, <laughs> the other players on his team are going to get rebounds as well. He also has really good basketball IQ. You could see when he runs the unit, when he's the point guard without Brunson, that the unit runs pretty smoothly and he can get a nice shot for himself or for others on the court. We obviously know he can score in bunches. There are times where he can get 30. Obviously, he doesn't usually get 30 because, again, he has to share the ball with Brunson, Randall, Barrett, who are the main three scorers on the team. He's also a great free throw shooter. I believe last year he shot 90% from the free throw line, and I don't know what he's shooting this year, but I'm sure it's something close to that. And that's important because when you're down to the wire, you need someone who can shoot the free throws or someone that you can get the ball into and they foul so you can go to the free throw line and make the shots. I think he really earned the trust of the Knicks staff for the way he's been playing this season especially. I know that Barrett obviously is injured right now, so I mean him closing games has to do with also Barrett not being there, but I think even when Barrett comes back, he's going to have more of a, a bigger role in terms of closing games because as you see, obviously it's not just him out there. It's not just him out there on the court, but he's getting it done. He's making smart plays. He's not turning the ball over in clutch moments. He's making sure he makes the right plays. He's hustling for loose balls. He's finding teammates, open shots. Like, he's doing what he has to do. You also have someone who's excited to play in New York. He's happy to be there, and there's no reason why you should trade him when he has so much potential, and he's still very young. This is something that I've said in the previous video a long time ago. <laughs> if you've been following me for a while, you know you know. But I said you need to give players time because people expect players to just come out of college and just be a star right away. And sometimes that's the case. Sometimes you come into the NBA and you're ready. And sometimes you're not. We've seen plenty of players who took four years maybe and they become a star then. And I'm not saying quickly is going to be a superstar or anything, but I'm just saying like we need to give players time. Like stop calling people bust just because they didn't average 20 points per game in their first season. <laughs> How about CJ McCollum, for example? I believe it was his second year in the league, maybe his third, but whatever. Early on in his career, he was averaging like six points per game with the Blazers. And then the next year, he averaged like 20, one most improved. And now we know CJ McCollum is balling in New Orleans and he's one of their most important players. So give players time, but he is playing very well quickly will get a bag soon. If not from the Knicks, somebody else.